In this video, we're going to review how you can run OAS within Docker containers. In a standard installation or standalone installation, the OAS server will run directly on the host operating system, just like any other application. But with Docker, the Docker engine itself runs on the host and you can place one or more instances of the OAS server within containers. This provides quite a bit of flexibility and portability, so you can do things like mapping host directories so containers can share things like configuration files and other resources. But another typical use of containerized applications is creating what's called an application stack. Once you've created that stack, you can then repeat the deployment by just taking the container image and passing it along from server to server. The steps for running Docker in an OAS container are first, you have to install Docker on your host operating system, either Linux or Windows. You also have to have an installation of the OAS platform on Linux and in Windows. Um, these are going to be the .NET Core version. And in our downloads page, you'll see that there are specific downloads for Linux as well as the Windows .NET Core version. You're going to create a Docker image run the containers, and then you'll be configuring your license host so that you can manage the licenses across all of your containers. Now, in this video, we're not going to be covering the installation of Docker or the downloading of the OAS platform, but we will be going through step by step, creating the image, running the containers, and managing the license host. So we'll start out doing a setup in Linux, and I've already downloaded to an OAS directory the OAS Linux distribution as well as the OAS Linux license host and I've already created the Docker file. The steps for creating the Docker file are going to be in the step-by-step -step instructions for setting up OAS and Docker but I'll review the contents of that file. And inside the OAS Linux folder is the full application for the server. If you're running this as a standalone installation, you can just run this directly. And the OAS engine is the executable that you're going to be calling. But we'll see how we reference that within the Docker file so that we can containerize that. The next thing is I'm opening up a console and I'm checking to see what the uh, IP address is of this machine so that I can reference that when I'm going to be looking at the configuration. And I've got it right there, 192.168.181 on my local network. And I'm going to open up another console and I'm going to change my directory to the OAS Linux folder. And I'm going to set up the OAS engine to be executable by calling chmod plus x OAS engine. That just makes it executable so we can call it directly from the command line if we wanted to execute that as a standalone installation. And that's what I'm doing right now. You can see the service starting up and then I can go over to my Windows machine, open up the OAS configuration application and connect in on that IP address which I previously grabbed. And now we can see those tags and we can see that the data is flowing. Now we can switch back over to the Linux machine and we'll shut down the server. Go over to the Windows machine and we can see that that has indeed shut down because it's no longer communicating with the configuration application. Now back over in Linux, I'm going to rearrange my consoles because I'm going to be adding another one later. And I'm going to go back one directory into the OAS directory that's containing the Docker file. And I'm going to call Docker build with the tag parameter. I'm just going to name it OAS so that we're going to be creating an image with the name OAS so we can refer to it more easily. It goes through the build steps fairly quickly. And then we can look in the Docker image catalog and we can see that the OAS image exists. Now, how this is done is within the Docker file, there's a set of instructions, and this is on our online documentation as well. The first line is the from line, which is going to be essentially the baseline of this image. And we're saying to use the .NET runtime, the .NET core runtime, that is. We're going to expose two ports. Now, this is required, port 58725 and 58727. 58727 is the port for communication, the TCP communications between OAS servers as well as the configuration application. And 58725 is going to be for web access or REST API access. The next line is a copy command, which copies the contents of the OAS Linux folder into the image into a directory called OAS. We're going to make that call again to ensure that the OAS engine file is an executable. 
And then the entry point is the command that is called when the container is started. And in this case, we're going to be calling the OES engine executable. So we'll close up the Docker file and I'll show you a couple of other commands. So in addition to the Docker image LS command that I executed before, you can also execute a call to see which containers are currently running. That's Docker container PS. It'll show you if any containers are running, stopped, or so on. On Windows, there is a Docker desktop application, but on Linux, there are several third-party applications that have a graphical interface. DockStation is one that you can get for free and it will show you some graphical details. It's a little bit easier to manage your containers. So I'll switch over to the container screen. You can see that there are no existing containers. And now I'm going to run the first container with the command docker run dash it. And just as before, you'll see the OES engine is starting up and it's ready to go. You can also see in the application that that container shows up. You can look at the info and what we want to grab are the ports. Now you can see that 58725, 58727 are exposed. At this point, you would not be able to reach the container because those ports are only accessible on the Linux machine. And since you have to use a Windows machine at this current time to use a configuration application, you would not be able to reach those containers. So what I'll do is I'll stop the container and I'm going to start up a new one with the parameter dash IT with an uppercase P, which means map some random ports to the exposed ports. Now, if you look at the info, now we can see that 58725 and 58727 are mapped to some external ports. So now we can access the container by going to the host's IP and those ports. We'll switch over to the Windows machine and we'll try that out. So instead of using 58727, we'll use the port that was mapped to 58727. And now you can see data flowing into the tags. Up to this point, we've just been working with a single container on Linux. So let's go back, clean up some of the old containers I had running, and we'll spin up another instance of the OAS engine in a second container. And then we'll connect in with the Windows machine again and we'll see them running side by side. So one container is already running and we're going to execute that docker run dash it with an uppercase P. This will create another container and mapping a couple of random ports again to the exposed ports in the container. The engine is going to start up and then we can go back and look at the info to find out which ports were mapped. Keeping in mind, you can map explicitly within your Docker file which ports you want to use, or you can add the ports to the docker run command when you spin up the new container. But in this case, 32770 is the new random port that's been assigned to 58727, and then we'll use that when we connect over from the Windows machine. The OAS configuration app lets you open up multiple tabs, each tab connecting to a different server. But in this case, just to demonstrate, I'm going to open up another instance of the application so that we can see two connections side by side, each connecting to a different container, and we can see the data flowing into each. In this new window, I'm going to add in that 32770, the custom port that's been assigned to 58727. That'll connect to the second container, and we'll see the data flowing in. And then when we look at the sign value, on both of these, we'll see that the value looks like it's the same. So this might be confusing, but in the OAS simulated data, things like sign value, ramp value, they're going to be based on the system clock. So those will look like they're the same value. But if you choose the random value, that's a true random number, you're going to see that these two different containers are spinning up different random numbers. So that actually proves that we're connecting to two different machines on two different ports with different data. You can also prove this out by doing what I'm doing here. And I'm going to shut down each of the containers, pop back over into the Windows machine, and you can see each one of the separate containers are going to be disconnected from the OES configuration application. Starting out fresh, we're going to be looking at how to apply a license to a container. Using that same command, docker run dash it with an uppercase p, we're going to create a new container and we'll map some random ports. We'll go in, look at the ports, and then connect in again with the Windows machine using the configuration app. 
Normally at this point with a standalone application, you would use the configuration application and select configure license. You would use the TCP port of 58727, but in this case, we're going to be using the mapped port for the container. And what you'll see is the screen where you would enter in the license key supplied by OAS support. And this will not work for containers. License codes are tied to hardware and you can't have more than one license applied to a machine. So this is where the license host application comes into play when you're running with containers. Back over in Linux, we're going to navigate to the OAS Linux license host directory and then we'll locate the OAS license host executable file. Just like the OAS engine, we're going to execute the chmod plus x on the OAS license file so that we can execute that and get the service up and running. Once it's marked as an executable, all you have to do is execute dot slash OAS license host, and this will start up the OAS license host application. One container was already running, and you can see that the license host already recognized that container. You can also see that the license host is running on port 58729, which is also configurable. And this is the port we're going to use to connect into from the configuration app in Windows. To apply a license to the container host, you then go into the configure app and select configure container license and connect into the license host on that port 58729. And then you'll see a similar screen to what you've seen when you're connecting into a standalone application. This time it'll apply to the license host. If you've purchased a license, you can always contact OAS support and get your license key based on the license code. This will ensure that the purchased product features will be enabled, as well as setting the limits on the number of containers you can run simultaneously on any given license host. In this case, we're just going to activate a demo, which will connect up to the OAS server and apply a demo license for a free 30-day trial. OAS demo licenses for containers activate up to 1 million containers on any license host and also unlimited tags, including all product features. So you should see no limitations and it'll allow you to try out all of the product features. Now the license host is dynamic. So as new containers spin up, they're picked up by the license host and the license is applied. When containers shut down, those containers are removed from the license host, freeing up a slot for any new containers you'd like to spin up within your license limitations. I'll demonstrate that by opening up two more consoles creating two new containers, running them simultaneously, and we'll see that the license host picks them up and it will report within the console output that it has recognized the additional containers. We'll also see that when containers shut down, the license host also reports new container counts. Within our online documentation, we have instructions for setting up the OAS engine within a Linux environment as a daemon, which will allow the service to start up when the machine starts up. You can follow the same instructions, changing the necessary fields for the OAS license host to get this also running as a separate daemon or service on the Linux machine. To do this, you'll create a new service file for the OAS license host, and you're going to change the description to something that's meaningful to you. You'll also change the exec start to point to the executable for the OAS license host. The working directory field will also be changed accordingly. And then also give it a new syslog identifier. This is a unique identifier for the Linux system. Now the last section of this video is going to cover running OAS within Docker containers on a Windows host. If you know that your host is going to be Linux containers, then there's no need to proceed. The steps for running within Windows containers are almost identical to running within Linux, but with a few key differences. The first is the Docker file. You're going to be changing the from entry to point to the .NET Core runtime. And you're also going to be adding a different entry point pointing to the OAS engine DLL. And also you're going to be changing the identity using a user command so that it runs as a system process. So we'll switch back over to Windows to complete the remaining steps. And on the OES website, you can go to the Downloads page, and you'll download the OES platform for the Windows.NET Core. This is what's going to be running the OES engine within a container. You'll also download the license host, which will also install and run as a Windows service. To save some time, I've already downloaded the .NET Core version of the OES platform and put it in a directory. And I've also downloaded the license host and installed it on this machine. Next, I'm going to go over to a text editor and create the Docker file within that directory and then save that. 
and then we can bring up a console and start running the same commands that we did over in Linux. Of course, this assumes that you've already got Docker installed on the Windows machine. You can always check to see if it's installed by going to the console and entering the command docker version, and this will spit out all the information about the currently running version of Docker. If it's not installed, you'll get an error that the command is not known. And just as a quick check, I'm also going to run those same commands to look at all of the installed images and also see if any other containers are currently running. It's important to note that even though we're running Docker on Windows, the Docker desktop application will virtualize Linux containers by default. So you have to make sure that you switch over to using Windows containers within the tool tray application, and then you can run the OES engine as a Windows container. And now that we're switched over, we can start building our first image using the same exact command on Linux, using the Docker build with the tag of OAS. This will download the images for the base runtime and anything else that's required and then it'll start going through the steps of the Docker file and build up your first OAS image. Running a container is also the same as Linux. You just execute docker run dash it OAS, and this will spin up a new container. We're not gonna be doing mapping of ports right now, but this will run a new container on the Windows system. A nice feature of the Windows version of Docker is that there's a built-in desktop application, so you don't need a third-party or open source application for monitoring containers. This is also available from the system tray and it just pops right open and you can navigate through and look at your running containers, look at the info about them, get the open ports, just like we did on Linux. Now we'll just stop this container and remove it and we're gonna create a new container using the same command where we do map the ports and then we'll spin this up. We'll go into the Docker desktop application, look at the new container, and we'll see now we have mapped ports, which we'll use to connect in from our OAS configuration application. And since all of this is taking place on the same machine, we can use localhost instead of having to pick the IP address of the machine. Now you could use the IP address if you're connecting from an external machine using a different OAS configuration app, but since everything's localhost, it makes it a little bit more convenient. And now that we're connected in, we can look at the configuration app, look at some tags, and see data coming in from the container. So I'll quickly go through and start up another container and connect in with the OAS configuration app, making sure I reference the proper ports. Now that these two containers are running, you can see them running side by side within the configuration app, each in its own tab, and we can flip back and forth and look at data flowing in. Next, I'm now stopping the containers in the desktop application. And as I do that, you can see them get disconnected from the configuration app. So this also, again, proves just like we did in Linux that we're talking to two different containers, two different instances of the OAS engine, and they're running independently. And finally, we'll configure licensing by going to the start menu and selecting OAS license host. This opens up the license host application controller that allows you to start and stop the service. And what we'll do is go into the configuration app again, select configure container license, connect into localhost on that same port, and you'll see it's not currently running. Start up the service and connect back in. And now you see we've got the license code and the license key, and I had previously activated the demo so this machine already has 1 million containers activated with all of the features enabled. And over time, you'll see the number of containers utilized increasing and decreasing as we start and stop containers. Thank you for watching. And at any time, you can always check out our online documentation, especially the section on getting started with OAS and Docker containers at openautomationsoftware.com slash getting started with slash OAS Docker. You can always look into our OAS knowledge base and see all the other product features at openautomationsoftware.com slash KB and download our product with a free 30-day evaluation with all product features enabled at openautomationsoftware.com slash downloads.